Kids, you're sitting in physics one day and you learn about Newton's second law, F equals MA. And then all of a sudden you look at your homework and there's this thing sitting there staring at you and you're wondering, what the hell is that? Well, that's what I'm going to run through here today, because this is a real classic problem that shows up in just about every physics text. And really, it's nothing other than a simple application of Newton's second law. You see, Newton's second law can be applied to each of these three blocks individually. And when we look at the three blocks as a system, or really three blocks which are connected by strings, we can come up with the acceleration of all three blocks. Now I'm going to solve this problem as though there's no friction between this block and the surface, but I'll show you what to do just in case you're looking at some sick and twisted version of this uh, where somebody tossed in some friction here. Now like I said, this is nothing other than an application of Newton's second law. So the first thing we're going to do is apply Newton's second law to this one kilogram block sitting right here. Now before we just start slapping numbers into Newton's second law for this ball right here, what I want to do is go through and show all the forces which are acting on this ball. The first being gravity. Now gravity is acting down on this ball, but it's going to be pulled upward as we release all these blocks from rest. And the force that's pulling it upward is the tension from this string. Now the tension in the string upward is greater than the force downward by gravity, otherwise the ball wouldn't go anywhere. So I'm going to draw this tension vector just a little bit longer than I drew the gravity vector. Now dumping these forces into Newton's second law. We know the sum of all forces acting on this ball is equal to ma. And there are two forces are the tension and the force by gravity. So for our sum of all forces, we're going to have tension plus the force by gravity equals the mass of the ball. That's one times the acceleration. Now we don't know the acceleration. And there's an issue here in this line. You'll notice I drew the tension is positive and gravity is positive. But the issue is tension is up and gravity is down. And what we need to do here is establish a positive direction. So let's just say up for this ball is positive. That means gravity is in the negative direction. Now we know the force by gravity is equal to mg. So substituting that term in here, which gives us this line where we have two unknowns, the tension and the acceleration of the ball. Now just like in math class, if you have two unknowns, you better have two equations. So all we're going to do now is look at another block in order to set up another equation in order to solve for our unknown acceleration. So looking at this block right here, again there's the force downward by gravity. But canceling out the force by gravity, there's the normal force. But horizontally on this block, there's two strings. Now the rule with strings is that whatever tension is at one end of the string needs to be at the other. So if there's some tension T over here on this hanging ball, that same tension is going to exist over here on our block. Now there's another tension over here from this string, which is supporting this 3 kilogram block. But the issue here is, these two tensions aren't the same. We have two different strings, and they have to have different tensions in them. Let me explain why. If the tension on the right, or pulling the block to the right, was the same as the tension pulling the block to the left, this block wouldn't go anywhere. Well, we know if we release the system from rest, this heavy block is going to pull everything so that this heavy block moves downward, which means this tension has to be greater than that tension. Which means we have to complicate this problem just a little bit at this point. Because we have two different strings, we have two different tensions. So I'm going to call this tension in the left string, and this tension in the right string. So now we can apply Newton's second law. Not in the vertical axis, but in the horizontal axis. But again, we have to choose a positive direction here. And this is where have, there's a little bit of a trick in the problem. You see, if we said upward was positive over here, that upward motion of the ball would correspond to this block being pulled to the right. Which means this tension to the right is going to be positive, and this tension to the left is going to be in the negative direction. And that's going to equal the mass of the block times its acceleration. Now it might seem like we're digging ourselves a little bit of a hole here, because whereas over here we had two unknowns, again I'm going to call that TL, we had two unknowns, now all of a sudden we've added an equation and now we have a third unknown. But kids, this isn't a coincidence, we have three unknowns and we have one, two, three blocks. So guess what we're going to do next? 
we're going to apply Newton's second law to this three kilogram block right here. Now, if we look at the forces acting on this three kilogram block, there's the force downward by gravity, and there's the tension force acting upward. And there's this tension by this right string acting upward. And again, this is where we have to be careful with direction. Since we said up was positive over here, right was positive over here, that would all correspond to the downward motion of this block. And while this seems counterintuitive, we're actually going to say down is positive over here on this block, which means in the sum of all forces on the block, we're going to have FG acting in the positive direction. And then in the negative direction, we're going to have the tension on this right string. That's going to equal MA. Now for this block, the force by gravity is going to equal 3 times G. That's 29.4 Newtons. So subbing that in, we now have three equations with three unknowns. So all we need to do is rearrange these equations and substitute them in, which means we're done the physics of this problem. All we have left is math. Now the nice part of the math here is that this central equation includes all three of our unknowns. So if we rearrange this equation on the left for TL, and the equation on the right for TR, and then substitute each of those formulas into our central equation, we can solve for A. Now I want to pause right here before I solve for A and show you something. Ultimately what we've done is we've looked at all the forces acting on all the blocks in this entire problem. And look at what it's boiled down to. If you look at this problem as a tug of war between this block and this block, we have this force by gravity over here at 9.8 newtons, and the force by gravity over here, 29.4 newtons. And those two forces are producing a net force on the system. And that net force is causing all three blocks to accelerate. Well, look at what we've got here. We've got the total mass of all three blocks. And really, all this line is right here is the net force equals MA, or Newton's second law. And solving for A, we find the acceleration of the system, or all three blocks, is 3.26 meters per second squared. So really, this entire problem is just an application of Newton's second law. It just gets a bit confusing because you have so many forces at play in this problem, it's hard to know what's going which way and how to put everything together in order to solve for the acceleration. So looking back at what we did here, there's really just two tricks that we had to pay attention to. The first was realizing that the tension in the two strings was not the same. The second was establishing a positive direction, which strange as it may be, looked something like this. So I hope this kept somebody out there from crying all over their physics book. And on that note, that's all for now.